dish on you know this Friday. Let's get dish. to the day, daily dish. Scientists believe they found a fragment of the asteroid that killed off the really? dinosaurs. NASA calls the discovery mind-blowing, of course. Mm -hmm. It's one of several recent finds at a fossil site in North Dakota. The fossils unearthed there include fish that got sucked into the debris, blasted out during the, the strike 66 million years ago, okay. of course. Yeah. A turtle impaled by a stick and a possible dinosaur leg that syncs up with the time period. Also found, now listen, Ron, I just okay. saw this right. this week on NOVA. On the dig and the yeah. scientists who are there right. and they dug up a piece of scaly hide and I mean a big piece and a tusk or a you know really? like a rhino horn no, or they all dating, triceratops. Tr dating back to 66 million mm -hmm. years ago so well that, that does make sense then mm -hmm. that it could have been and I've always thought I mean you, we don't know for certain but they think seem to think it was an asteroid that hit the earth and that's what killed well, the dinosaurs. They are looking at a layer of a deposited layer that is unique yeah. to that time period and you see it around the globe yeah. so it's a really bright orange they dug it out to show us all of course they could tell me anything so and why, go, why didn't they take out the mosquitoes that's what I'm <laughs> you know or cockroaches <laughs> yes cockroaches have probably been around for more than 66 well, million years I think years. they are prehistoric well, they, look at those alligators and crocodiles mm -hmm. why were those dudes actually not uh, hurt I don't something know. lived well, birds, I think, are the closest ancestor to dinosaurs. But at the same time, and they can fly. So maybe that, that helped them out. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Get me out of here, you know? <laughs> well, this, is, you know, is a cute thing, too. Is there's a wayward bear somehow made its way oh, yeah. to the back lot of Six Flags Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. Uh, firefighters and animal control and members of the California Fish and Wildlife worked together to free the poor little thing. It was trapped between two storage containers. They had to sedate oh. the bear, and then they used some heavy machinery to move the container so they could reach him, it was safely uh, relocated by the California Fish and That's Wildlife. That's not Frank the Tank, is it? You Hank the Tank? I hank the Tank. You know, <laughs> it could be Hank the Tank out there. Is he in California uh, now? No, he gets he's around. The, we the were traveling seeing Frank. Bear. I think he did. I think Hank was, bear. he was busting into people. Last we saw Hank the Tank, I believe it was in Reno, Nevada, not far from California. You know, busted I into think you're some, onto something. some homes in the Tahoe mm -hmm. area. Now he's been sedated. He may never go. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm uh, never going I think to anybody's Hank house the Tank again. will be back. <laughs> Look like he lost a few pounds there, though. A few. Him. A few. <laughs> well, we talked about asteroids, and now we're going to talk about deep space. This thrills me. Space history was made after astronomers captured the first images of a supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A at the center of our yeah. Milky Way galaxy. Now, this image shows the shadow of the black hole surrounded wow. by a bright ring. It's sort of an astronomical donut. Yeah, yeah. Astronomers said the black hole is 27,000 light years away from Earth and four million times bigger than our sun. If it looks familiar, it's because the same team of scientists produced a picture of another black hole in the middle of the galaxy named M87, that was back in 2019. Right. While the two pictures are similar, uh, M87 is actually around a thousand times bigger. Than Sagittarius. That is pretty amazing stuff. You know, we've, I was talking to a scientist from NASA just earlier today. Oh, were you? Of course, we weren't talking about that. We're talking about the moon. But I mean, I've always been interested in space. You have Me too. too. I'm fascinated very, very by fascinated. it. We're, we're planning on going back to the moon. But the cool, cool thing that's going on this weekend, and the reason why I talked to NASA, is because we've got the blood moon coming up. Oh, that's yes, right. Yes, it means which is when the Earth goes into, or I should say, the moon goes into the Earth's shadow, the penumbra of the Earth's shadow, and it'll have a reddish tent to it, or a kind of a rose colored tent. But what? We've got but a chance for storms on Sunday night. I was going to say, will we see Others it? Others might see the blood moon, uh, but I, we're, we might have trouble. Let's just say that. Heads Is it on only that. one one sighting opportunity, or will Monday? Well, no, it's maybe? just one sighting. It, okay. it, usually, it, it'll take, like, it depends on how much of the shadow it hits. Usually, it'll take about an hour, hour, two hours, something like that, for it to go through the Earth's shadow. And it kind of, what it'll look like is like phases of the moon. But for a point, it'll, look, it'll be totally eclipsed, at least somewhat, in, in the penumbra, so we'll have that rosy tint to it. So oh, well, we take might good be able pictures, all of you out there. Well, maybe yeah, NASA you, will send us some video. I'm sure we'll see plenty of pictures of the blood moon. That'll be this weekend. It'll be Sunday night is when that's going to happen. But like I said, it's not ideal weather conditions for us to see it. So. Well, you know